Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. For this week's video, let's discuss the movie, the novel, and also the real painting Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer painted around 1665. Now if you don't know, this is a famous painting painted during the Dutch Golden Era. He was basically what was known as the Master of Light. Very detailed and exquisite use of color and light. And famously, he was very slow in his output. I believe he only painted 40 paintings total. So, let's discuss who was the girl with a pearl earring. Was she a real person? Of course she's a real person. But at that time, there was, during the Dutch Golden Age of painting, there was a, a term called tronies. And what that was, they weren't considered portraits like what nowadays we consider portraits. A real portrait is a, of an actual person and you're trying to paint their likeness. So we kind of use that term portrait as a generic term nowadays. But back then, a portrait actually has to be of a specific person. So what many Dutch painters did at the time was maybe paint the likeness of a person, for example, a maid or somebody that, that's not well known. It could be any maid or it could be any, it could be any soldier on the street, for example, uh, or any tavern scene with a bunch of people. And it doesn't actually have to be that person. It could basically try to make it, they tried to make it look like any person of, of that age and gender or that station. It's possible that it was actually a portrait though, but we don't know the actual title. So, but it's also possible that it was a trony and Johannes Vermeer just used several different people to paint the image. So we don't know for sure. Johannes Vermeer famously had 11 children and most of them were girls, I believe. So it's very likely that the girl with the pearl earring was one of his daughters. Now an argument against that was that because the girl in the painting had a parted mouth and wet lips, that signifies that it's more like a sexual thing to them. Some people argued that it couldn't be his daughter because he wouldn't paint her like that. But again, going back to the Troni thing, he could have used her to model for it and then change it to look like just any average, any average teenage girl. So it's possible it could have been one of his daughters since there are so many in his household. Now the other possibilities is it could have just been a neighbor or it could have been a maid of his or a maid of his main patron which is Van Riven. So there are several possibilities. What Tracy Chevalier did with her, her novel was posit the fact that it was a maid in his household and of course she had made up a name, she made it the name of Greet. Now what the movie also did was made the possibility that maybe Greet and Vermeer were lovers or they had a thing for each other. So that's possible but then again since Vermeer never left any documents at all for his, especially his art process, there's no documents or drawings found afterwards, no diary of his, his dealings. The only factual information they had of what Vermeer did was his official documents from the city, for example, when he got married, uh, the fact that he was, he became the headman of the guild, the art guild in, in Delft, the city that he lived in. They documented the time he died, they documented the birth of his children. They documented the time that he died. And since he died, unfortunately, he died bankrupt because due to the wars in France, the French invaded the Netherlands. And as a result of that, many artists weren't able to sell their paintings, especially for artists such as Vermeer. They weren't able to sell their paintings. And on top of that, his patron died a few years, I believe a few years before he died. That started, his, started off his financial problems. And then the war with France increased it even more. He wasn't able to sell paintings. And as far as the official documents on how he died, he, they interviewed his wife during the bankruptcy proceedings. And she mentioned that he was fine. But then all of a sudden, for a few days, he fell into like despair. I guess due to his bankruptcy, he couldn't sell anything. And he had 11 children to take care of. It was very rapid. He like got sick in a couple of days and just died. Like I said, in the official documents, Due to the bankruptcy, they they had an inventory of all his items in his home. So basically, they had to auction off, sell, itemize everything, all his paintings and all his his equipment, and determine a price so they could pay off his debts. I believe his mother-in-law maybe kept a couple paintings from him, but most of his belongings were auctioned off. Interestingly, there is nothing 
there's no mention of a camera obscura found in his uh, belongings. Now, one of the main things which is which is kind of a hot topic was the fact that he used a camera obscura for his to, to create his artwork. Now, I don't think that's a bad issue in and of itself. For example, like nowadays, many people paint and do art using photographs of, as a reference. So people who think that Vermeer somehow cheated by using a camera obscura, you know, they don't really know much about art, in my opinion. The composition, design, lighting, everything, planning, has to be created by the artist himself. And also the fact if he did use a camera obscura, it's a lot more, still a lot more difficult than even uh, using a, re a photographic reference because in essence you have to use the camera obscura reference. You have to build like this little miniature uh, light room where where the image was projected on the wall and it's flipped upside down and it's hard to see. So it's really difficult to actually like use it to trace an image, for example. Now we know for a fact that, that Vermeer, his older paintings were all done traditionally. So he didn't use a camera obscura in those instances. Now with the movie and the book, the book was written in 1999 by Tracy Chevalier. And she got inspired to write a novel about it because when she was younger, she had a poster of a girl with a pearl earring and she kept it for wh wherever she lived. I believe she had it all through her young adult life. She was inspired to do a novel of it. Now the main topic of the novel was basically who was the girl with a pearl earring and what kind of relationship she had with uh, Johannes Vermeer. I think both the book and the novel did a great job of answering that question. Who was the girl with the pearl earring? The story of Greek was fascinating and the whole life as a servant during the during the 17th century in Holland and how she uh, went about leaving the status of a maid is kind of similar to uh, my previous review of Alias Grace was a similar, similar thing but this was more of a positive tone than a negative tone with that story. So let's discuss some spoilers with the difference between the book and the novel, right? All set? Let's start. The book was, was still actually fairly short. Uh, I listened to the audio version and it was only about seven and a half hours. But still they were they cut off a few things like one of the main plot points in the, in the novel was the fact that uh, she dealt more with her family in the movies they didn't really go discuss her family. In the novel she had two siblings she had a, a, a younger brother who was also who was interning as, as a tile maker as his father and then also a, a, a much younger sister who was around 10 and then she was also a, very friendly with it with a, with one of the daughters of Vermeer who was also around 10 I think her name was Marta that whole topic was was left out though but in fact Marta later on in the future she still remained friends with Marta. In fact, she was the one that, that gave her all that gossip around uh, what was going on with Vermeer's family, even though she was not able to keep in touch with him. Yeah, I don't want to go into the, all the, the additional subplots, but it's a really short read. But still, in fact, the movie and the novel were still very uh, close. It's, I'm not sure even which one I, I like more, since they're uh, very close. One thing I like about the, the novel, though, is they described a lot of Vermeer's other paintings they kind of showed how like she was able to help him out with the painting so almost like describing his thought process on how he was able to come up with the paintings which was really intriguing because obviously we're not we don't know since he had no records we don't know what his thoughts are on his creation process but in a novel since it actually took place I believe for she was a maid for two years from 16 to 18 because 18 she got married to uh, Peter uh, Tracy Chevalier uh, gave us a glimpse on into what it was like to paint the paintings on his whole entire art process during those two years that the paintings that he made though there was only like a, a couple of paintings I believe maybe I, maybe I do like the novel more because for me it actually it really helped me get into uh you know the, the mood as an artist even though the story wasn't really about him it, it gets into his motivation on his thought process of making art for the colors the the composition the lighting for example you know just the whole thing and and also like the traditional methods of making like paints and inks and dyes like that and how long it would take to actually come up with something because he was only I believe he only made like two or three paintings a year which is very very slow for artists back then going along with the drawing I made for this review I actually took a lot longer because I was 
getting into my inner Vermeer mode. Maybe just take your time and, and see how, how good you can make something like this. I encourage you to check out either the book or the movie. They're both really good. That's it for this discussion. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.